Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Disney. Disney fires president as they panic over investors. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Fortune, Disney's live action movie boss is leaving as Bob Iger struggles with flops and proxy fight with Nelson Peltz. Nelson Peltz is the investor that wants Bob Iger out of the company and at the very least wants to be on the board of directors to help the company make more money. Also from Fortune, Bob Iger just got the backing of Walt Roy Disney's heirs in the proxy fight with Nelson Peltz. And it's great that Bob Iger has the support of Walt Disney and Roy Disney's heirs, their wealthy grandchildren. However, he should have already had their support. I'm not sure what took so long for them to come out and support him. He must have been working on this for a long time. Who knows what kind of deal he made with them. Also from Fortune, what Disney's next CEO needs to succeed, Bob Iger. And this is Kevin Mayer, who was a high-level executive at Disney, did the rollout for Disney+, Plus, a number of other things that actually were really, really well done, but Bob Iger wouldn't allow him to succeed him as CEO. So he left the company, went to TikTok, left TikTok, started his own company, and now he's back trying to help out Disney, just as a consultant, but he may wind up being Disney's future CEO too. He actually would be a good choice. He's very smart. From Deadline, Disney shakeup. Sean Bailey exits as president of Walt Disney Motion Picture Studios. Searchlight's David Greenbaum takes over and also will run 20th, which is their Fox film division. Effective immediately, Walt Disney's president of Motion Picture Studios, Sean Bailey, who turned the company's animation vault into a multi-billion dollar live action movie business, is departing after 15 years on the lot. Searchlight co-president David Greenbaum will take on a newly created role. He'll be president of Disney Live Action and president of 20th Century Studios. He'll report to Disney Entertainment co-chairman Alan Bergman. Steve Asbell will continue to serve as president, 20th Century Studios, a role he had since March 2020. He will report to Greenbaum. This splits up the Searchlight Pictures executive team of Greenbaum and Matthew Greenfield, two of the most highly regarded execs in the prestige film space, who right now have poor things squarely in the Best Picture race and other Oscar categories. It's a full circle moment for Bailey. He arrived at the studio as the producer of 2010's $400 million Christmas event title, Tron Legacy, and he'll stay on to produce Tron Aries before moving on to more entrepreneurial endeavors. Sean has been an incredibly important member of the studio's creative team for well over a decade, said Bergman. He and his team have brought to the screen iconic stories and moments that have delighted fans around the world and will stand the test of time. I know he'll continue to do great things, and I couldn't be happier that he's staying on as a producer of Tron Aries. Bailey has been a hit factory for Disney with such movies as live action takes on The Lion King at $1.66 billion global box office, Beauty and the Beast $1.2 billion, Aladdin $1.05 billion, and The Jungle Book at $962 million, to name a few. All in, he's yielded some $7 billion in global box office for Disney. With the launch of Disney's streaming service, Disney Plus, in November 2019, Bailey expanded his duties to oversee the streamer's live-action movies, including reimaginings of Lady and the Tramp and Pinocchio, the latter featuring Tom Hanks as Geppetto, character-driven films such as Togo, inspirational sports dramas such as Rise, and sequels to popular originals like Hocus Pocus 2, The Enchanted follow-up, Disenchanted, and Peter Pan and Wendy. Quote, these 15 years at Disney have been an incredible journey, but the time is right for a new chapter. I'm deeply grateful to my exceptional team and proud of the slate and history we've built together, said Bailey. I joined Disney while producing Tron Legacy, so it seems fitting that I will have the opportunity to work on the latest Tron as I depart. I wish Bob Iger, Alan Bergman, and all my amazing colleagues the very best for a bright future. Before Disney, Bailey co-founded and ran Live Planet with Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Chris Moore. And here's what David Greenbaum says about taking over the job. I want to thank Bob Iger and Alan Bergman for the extraordinary opportunity to continue the legacy of fabled and groundbreaking storytelling in both Disney and 20th century. It's an honor and responsibility I don't take lightly, and I'm eager to get to work with Steve Asbell and the teams. At the same time, the last 14 years working alongside and in partnership with my dear friend and colleague, Matthew Greenfield, have been unforgettable. Searchlight and the incredible team there remain the gold standard for quality in our business, and I look forward to watching their continued success in the years to come. Disney is definitely focused on making change to try to fix the company. Getting rid of Sean Bailey might be a good excuse to say they're at least doing something, but 
How this is going to turn into more success for them, it's really unclear. From Variety, Disney grandchildren slam activist investors in letters to company shareholders. We know who the villains are in this story. They've got the purple hair to prove it. The big question is what took so long for Bob Iger to get their support? Because this is beyond past the last minute to have them write letters like this. They must really not like Bob Iger, but figure he's better than Nelson Peltz. But they're figuring wrong when they figure that. Something here just doesn't add up. Descendants of Walt Disney and his brother Roy O. Disney have weighed in on the bid by two activist investment firms to win seats on the board of the Walt Disney Company, and they're on Bob Iger's side. Nelson Peltz, the activist investor who runs hedge fund Triumph Partners, is waging a proxy fight to install himself and ex-Disney CFO Jay Rizzullo as directors. Peltz's stated aim is to drive up the price of Disney stock. Another investment firm, Blackwell's Capital, supports the leadership of CEO Bob Iger, and the current board, but is urging Disney shareholders to vote for its own three candidates instead of Disney's or Tryon's nominees. Disney opposes the candidates put forward by Tryon and Blackwell's as lacking, quote, the appropriate range of talent, skill, perspective, and or expertise, and is urging shareholders to vote for its own 12 nominees. The candidate slates will be up for a vote at Disney's 2024 annual shareholder meeting on April 3rd. On Thursday, grandkids of Walt and Roy Disney issued two separate open letters to Disney shareholders supporting Iger and the current board. The signatories include filmmaker Abigail E. Disney, who in the past has publicly criticized the company over various issues. But what concerns us most about these hedge fund-backed opportunists is that they have little or no knowledge of what Disney truly means to people like you. Roy O. Disney's grandchildren, Abigail E. Disney, Roy P. Disney, Susan Disney Lord, and Tim Disney wrote in their letter, they haven't made any arguments for why they should be entrusted with the keys to the kingdom our family built. To the contrary, their I alone can fix it mentality, which is a reference to Donald Trump, makes, <laughs> makes clear that they are not interested in preserving the Disney magic, but stripping it to the bone to make a quick profit for themselves. The letter continued, Disney is lucky to be led by people who are looking to the future while drawing guidance from our cherished past. As the Walt Disney Company charts its path forward, it is imperative that the strategy Bob Iger, his management team, and the board of directors have implemented is not disrupted by those motivated by nothing more than their own self-interest. Disney's stories are filled with heroes and villains. We know who the villains are in this story, and we know they cannot be entrusted with protecting this company's rich legacy or guiding its bright future. All these guys are saying, these activist investors, is... Hey, I own three and a half billion dollars worth of your stock. Why don't you let me come onto the board of directors, not to control it necessarily, just as one of the many members of the board of directors, so at least someone who owns more than a billion dollars worth of stock in the company would actually have a say over what you do with the company to represent the shareholders' interests, the actual owners' interests, not the grandkids' interests, not the manager's interest. Not the employee's interest, but the owner's interest. The people who actually own the stock in the company. That's all they want to do. This is very misleading. The second letter, less strongly worded, is from the children of Diane Disney Miller, who was Walt Disney's older daughter. Quote, as the family of Walt Disney, we support the Walt Disney Company management and its board of directors and oppose the nominations put forth by Nelson Peltz, they wrote. Bob Iger has grown this company in a modern world and he continues to maintain a balance of creativity and profit. It is still a company based on a desire to entertain and explore. There have been challenging times, but this current management has adjusted and grown through those challenges. A Disney spokesman referred inquiries to a rep for the families. Tryon said in a statement, quote, We love Disney and recognize building on its rich history of delighting loyal fans is essential to its future success. Tryon invests in great companies like Disney and helps them grow and thrive for the long term. And we have the track record to prove it at companies like P&G, Heinz, and Mondelez. Disney has set up its own proxy vote campaign site at VoteDisney.com to canvas for shareholder support. Quote, your board and management team remain committed to driving meaningful growth and creating sustainable shareholder value long into the future, the company said in a February 12th letter to shareholders. Despite these efforts, two activist hedge funds, Tryon Fund Management and Blackwell's Capital, are each seeking to replace members of your board with their own separate nominees, none of whom your board believes possess the appropriate range of talent, skill, perspective, and or expertise to effectively support Disney's building priorities in the face of continuing industry-wide challenges. From Fortune, ex-TikTok Chief Kevin Mayer, what Disney's next CEO needs to succeed Bob Iger.
Kevin Mayer, a prime contender in the race to succeed Bob Iger as Disney CEO, has mapped out what he sees as the must-have traits for the next chief executive officer of the Mouse House. Boasting a rich history with the entertainment behemoth dating back to 1992, Mayer's track record is punctuated by pivotal roles in orchestrating game-changing mergers and acquisitions, including groundbreaking deals for Marvel, Pixar, and key assets of 21st Century Fox. He also played a crucial role in steering the launch of Disney+, Plus, a seismic shift that reshaped the company's digital landscape. If you want to know more about Kevin Mayer and what he's capable of, listen to a couple of interviews that he's done recently. Listen to his interviews during the time when he was helping to launch Disney+. Plus. I saw one on CNBC in particular. Where I was like, wow, this guy would be a great CEO of Disney. But that's not something Bob Iger wanted, so he never even had a chance. Exiting Disney in 2020 to helm short-form video platform TikTok, Mayer's tenure was cut short amidst escalating pressure from the Trump administration over the platform's ties to China, prompting his swift departure. Mayer has since redirected his expertise towards the booming realms of streaming and digital content as the founder and CEO of Candle Media, boasting an impressive portfolio featuring the likes of Reese Witherspoon's media venture Hello Sunshine and global kids entertainment titan Moonbug, home to the popular franchises such as Coco Lemon and Blippi. Having returned to the Disney fold as a strategic advisor to Iger last year, Mayer's insights have become increasingly coveted amidst continuing speculation surrounding his old boss's succession. The three traits Disney's next CEO must have. Speaking on stage in Qatar, Mayer outlined three indispensable attributes necessary for the next occupant of one of the world's most coveted corner offices. But Bob is tough to replace. We saw that the first time around, acknowledged Mayer, reflecting on the turbulent tenure of Bob Chapek, who replaced Iger in 2020 before leaving in 2022. Bob Iger is an incredibly capable CEO. He knows the company inside out. He and I made those content acquisitions that really changed the face of not only Disney, but also the entertainment industry in many ways. A Disney CEO really has to understand brands, the influence and power that they have, and the responsibility that goes along with having those brands. Furthermore, Mayer underscored the imperative for a fusion of creativity and shrewd business acumen to navigate Disney's multifaceted operations spanning theme parks, streaming, pay TV channels, consumer products, and sports. Quote, they have to be creative, but also a substantially sophisticated business person. It's a multifaceted company, he added. Acknowledging the daunting task of filling Iger's formidable shoes, Mayer said, quote, Bob's a great CEO and very difficult to replace, but no one is irreplaceable. Pressed on his potential candidacy, Mayer remained coy, quipping, no comment on that, but I spent a lot of time there. Kevin Mayer would definitely like to take a shot at being CEO of Disney. Whether or not he can please Bob Iger enough that Bob Iger says, okay, board of directors, pick this guy for the next CEO, remains to be seen. So Disney needed to show their investors they were making some changes and they were going to do something to improve their live action movie business. They can blame Sean Bailey, fire him out of there. It's not like the movies did very well, but really it's because of the agenda. It's not Sean Bailey that ruined these movies. He's a proven hit maker. Firing this guy gives Bob Iger and the board of directors something they can point to to say, hey, look, we're making changes and just trust us in the next couple of years, things are going to be a lot better. For Disney to make any kind of positive change, they need to let shareholders, actual shareholders like Nelson Peltz, onto their board of directors, and they've got to get rid of Bob Iger. He's been there for way too long, and it's his fault they've been pushing this agenda for years. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.